Hi, I'm Brent Hall. A little background. Uh, I was asked to uh, join farms many years ago in the late 80s and early 90s, 89 or 90, and uh, became the operating officer uh, there. And in doing that, I had some very close and, and wonderful uh, times with, with Hugh Nibley. And uh, today I'd like to take a few moments and just share some of those with you. I think you'll enjoy them. Uh, they were they were precious to me in, in many cases. Uh, we had houses on the, on the south side of BYU campus that we bought. We were blessed to buy and remodeled those and they became the old farms. And uh, he would come there often, and that hill was quite steep. And so some of the choices experienced, particularly in, in, in winter, it was difficult for him to climb that hill. And so I had a four-wheeler there, and I would go down the bottom of the hill, and he would be there in his, in his winter attire and hop on the back of that. And it was so fun for him. We'd drive to the top of the hill and deliver him to his, to his office, or as close as we could get. And he enjoyed that so much. And um, that kind of brings me to what I, what I found in Hugh Nibley for me was that he was so humble. And he was so pure in enjoying the, the, the nice things of the world. Another thing that, uh, that, uh, that I thought I'd like to share is that uh, right prior, uh, quite, just not too long before his death, I, I went to his home uh, to see if we could make arrangements for what he wanted to do with certain papers. And he was in bed, uh, not doing well. And I hesitated to even go in the first place. When I went there, I, I, I asked for his forgiveness, but I said, we, we would like to know what you'd like to do with these. And uh, he would have nothing about it. He said, here, don't worry about that. I want to tell you about this. And he had been there in his bed, facing the end of his mortal life, studying the hypocephalus. And he had found some things that were very important, and that's what he wanted to talk about. He wasn't concerned about anything else. There was nothing that he was concerned about except transmitting what he had found on this. And that was the kind of man he was. He was very, very focused. Uh, again, a, a few months Prior to his, his death, he called me and he says, Brent, he said, I spent the last evening on the other side. And I've been told that I'm going to be leaving soon and I need to get some things taken care of. Can you come over and help me? And I said, well, certainly we, we, I could. What, what do you want to do? And he said, well, I've got a lot of books and papers and things that need to be cleaned up and some things that need to be taken care of. And if you just come over, maybe bring some of the the kids there that work at, at farms with you, that would be wonderful. And I said that we would be happy to do that. Uh, but I wonder if I could ask a favor of you at the same time. And then he said, what's that? And I said, well, would you mind sharing with me what you saw there? And he agreed that he would do that. So we went the next day over and started doing the work. And then I pulled him aside and I said, okay, now tell me, tell me what you saw. And, um, he said, well, it's very, really very simple. He said, it kind of comes down to two scriptures. One is that uh, the glory of God is intelligence. And the next one is man is that he might have joy. He said, when I was there, I knew everything. Now, if any of you remember him, when he talked, he would raise his hands up and shake his head. And he'd say, I knew everything. And he says, because of that, I was really happy. And I think that that was a message that he would like to give all of us.